evening and welcome to episode number five here with the John Young Show this winter. And tonight we're going to be talking about music content. We're going to be talking remixes. We're going to be talking about sound for mobile DJs with Tony Fernandez. We'll be getting to that in just a couple of minutes tonight. Thanks for joining us. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. So we're going to be, sure. yep, we're moving over here, Tony. We are live right now. Perfect. Just, just uh, joining us tonight. Thank you guys. Hey, for joining us. We are getting ready and yeah. such. We had a little tech issue here as uh, we we're getting things set up. So we are now, I think, up and running. And Tony, you sound good. So, yeah. Right. Excellent. Excellent. So let's dig into our topics tonight. We are going to talk a little bit about music tonight. So, Tony, where did you want to go with that? Man, we can go all over, you know, um, honestly, I, uh, I'm such a, uh, I guess for, for lack of a better adjective, uh, music whore <laughs> when, it comes yep. to, when it comes to, uh, music. And I know through the, through the DJ pages and everything, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of, you will, of, uh, remixes and having good remixes, you know, um, I really think it's something that, a lot of DJs, you know, kind of, you know, if, if you want to step up your game and, and kind of set yourself apart from, you know, your peers and your competition and, you know, I mean, really, it, it really starts with the music, you know, it, 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 it truly does, you know, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's what really, it, it's why we started this, yeah. you know, it's why we got into the whole game, if you will, of, being a DJ, at least for me, and it seems like all my peers and all my friends, it's always, you know, man, what was that track? What mm -hmm. was that tune? What was that mix of that tune? Yeah. You know, and, and then the, the never ever, never ending quest of trying to find the right <laughs> version. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it really, to me, it starts and stops when it gets right down to the basic fundamentals. It just starts and stops with, music and finding good good tunes you know not being subjugated to what now pops in your email box or you know what the charts tell you or what the radio station tells tells you it really just gets down to you know finding that good track that different track or that track that everybody knows but you still have a different twist to it a different approach to it so yeah for me that's that's where it begins and ends honestly yeah, yeah. I have a good shout out here. We got David and uh, John and uh, joining us there. I see Chris and Jeffrey and Ron and oh, we've got uh, folks jumping in. Thank you guys for joining us tonight, uh, Tony. Oh. Tony, what I and I think I know the answer to this one. There's there's two kind of schools of thought when it comes to uh, accumulating a library of music. Some DJs basically like to find the one or two versions of a song that they like, and that's it. They don't go and and they basically find they dump the rest. And then there are some DJs who are comfortable having 15 versions of a song because they like to use them in specific different times. Where would you kind of fall in that spectrum? Well, um, I kind of fall into the spectrum of the 
the latter. Um, I have a huge hard drive. I have a huge library. So I kind of, well, it, it, let's put it this way. It, it, I, I spend uh, a good amount of time gathering and cultivating multiple remixes of just say, you know, for example, a Ariana Grande song or a Katy Perry song or something like that, something that I know is popular, but I'll still gravitate to only using probably one or two, just depending on the event I do, depending on the clients I'm, I'm spinning for, depending on the floor that's in front of me. So um, even though I am a huge proponent of remixes to not go off on a tangent, um, I, I do focus on a remix that still, at the end of the day, kind of uh, lends itself to the uh, to, to 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 still it be within the framework of the original song. Okay. I don't like uh, crazy like a trap, you know, dubstep jungle remix <laughs> of say, you know, whatever, you know. Um, actually, uh, uh, again, I go on a tangent. Uh, another um, uh, folder that I have that in my market has been just a huge benefit for me is actually, and personally, I, I love classic rock. I, I mm -hmm. love you know good good rock and roll music. So what I've been able to cultivate and be able to utilize in in my market is I've got a really good stash of classic rock songs that are remixed for for. For the club, for, okay, for nice. dance. So I'll have, you know, Aerosmith. I'll have, you know, Metallica. I'll have, you know, Van Halen. I'll have all these different, you know, that you would think of, you know, the, the police is a good one too, um, of, of good classic rock. But I've got house mixes to them. I got mm -hmm. dance mixes to them. So, and, a, you know, obviously to the right crowd, I actually play them. And that's a really good example of being able to, uh, have my cake and eat it too. I'll be able to play, say, a police song that even a 50, 60 year old guy would be like, what the heck was that? But they'll know it. They'll, they know the song because the remix I play doesn't really depart. You know, it doesn't deviate from the original that, that, that you know, that much. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not only about having 20 remixes of a particular track. It's about really having the right remix and be able to choose the correct mix for the crowd that you're playing to. So how do you go through and kind of, you get a song that that has, okay, you've got your album version, you may have a clean, a, a dirty version, what have you, but then you get into the different mixes of it that you've accumulated from different sources. So let's say you've got 10 versions of a song. How are you going sure. to kind of pare that down to the ones you are going to utilize? Well, for me, it really comes down to, again, knowing the music and do, doing your homework. Um, and there are a ton of, you know, different remixers out there. Obviously, like you go through SoundCloud and MixCloud and, you know, whatever, you know, service or whatever mm -hmm. source you try and get, get your stuff. I usually key, excuse me, I usually key on a certain remix person. Okay. So, so for me, it's like, for example, uh, like a, like a, hey, if, if I see a, a Dave Aud remix, or I see a um, um, uh, what's another guy that I like. Uh, 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 there's actually a, a lot of guys from the UK that I, I actually like. Um, um, Bimbo Jones, there you go. That's a good one. So if I know I see a certain name after the the song title yeah. that says re remixed by Bimbo Jones or Todd Terry's a, a good one. Uh, MK Mark Kitchen has actually come back. You know, I mean, Mark Kitchen was a huge, you know, house guy back in the, you know, in the 90s and the infancy of what classic house was. And uh, he's actually seemed to get a resurgence back into the music scene. So, um, again, for me, it's knowing these producers and, and knowing the remix guys. So I know what they're going to do. You know, sure. I, I know if I see, like I said, a, 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 a Craig a Vanity remix or a Dave Aud remix, I know what it's going to sound like. I don't have to. I don't have to sit there, download it, and spend ten minutes, you know, listening to it. I know what it's going to be. So you know, because, it's a great. Yeah. This is yeah. so because it's a new area for me to uh, really get. So some of these guys that are are doing their meat remix, do occasionally do they do something like a one eighty from their regular stuff, or is it pretty? Much, are they pretty consistent in the flavor they bring to the songs? Some do, you know, okay. I'd say a guy, you know, that I check for is like Todd Terry again, you know, and, and if you don't even know who Todd Terry is, I mean, he's just a guy that's been just an icon in, 
in the dance world, you know, like one of the biggest records, which I know is probably old now, you know, obviously it's old, but a good example of it is like, nobody knew who Todd Terry was. Like when um, that old song um, by Everything But The Girl Missing came out, which was, oh my God, what, in the late 90s, early, mm-hmm. early, you know, 2000s. Um, um, it actually was kind of a new age rock track and he took it, he flipped it, turned it into a dance record and you know, it, it, you know, that put him, that, that put him on the map, you know, and he's been cranking out remixes ever since guys like him do sometimes get into that creative mode and are like, you know, I, you know, I I have my signature sound, but I'm going to do with this particular artist or this particular project, I'm going to go make a left turn here, Mm -hmm. but generally they kind of stay to their bread and butter, you know? So, um, but again, it's, it's, it's knowing the artist and knowing if you're looking for remix guys, you know, um, another big guy that's kind of made it come back is, um, like, um, Armand, Armand, uh, Van Helden, um, same thing, you know, this guy was, was a DJ. I think he was actually involved. If, if I know my history, he was, uh, he's a, he was very instrumental in the creation and I think still part of, um, um, X-Mix, the, um, remix pool uh, sure. uh, service yep. up in uh, um, uh, Boston. And, um, you know, he, of course, he's done his own stuff, and he's huge guy, huge guy. You know, uh, again, big big in the house scene back in the two, you know, 2000s and whatnot. I guess kind of went off to a deep, deep end, but kind of came back. I actually see his name um, creep up. So, yeah, you know, um, um, l- like a good artist, I think, you know, that wants to explore their creativity. You know, there there are you know guys that will take take a, a departure from the norm because they want to flex their you know uh, creative muscles. But by and large, especially for the for the dance floor, it just to me it seems you're just going through the mental rolodex and just thinking of all the different remix guys that I look for. It they pretty much stay in their lane, you know. Sure. So. So another a question I have is uh, I've I've been using different mixes and such of songs and occasionally I will have someone who come up and say, "Oh, can you play the the original version?" Or in high schools, I've had it where, "Oh, that's not the right version of the song I wanted." Sure. I'm just get, dabbling into that arena, so it's new for me and I haven't developed the what to say. <laughs> how, right. do you, how do you handle that when especially when it's you're doing a mix and you're playing a, a mixed version or a redrummed version what have you and they're like, "Oh, could you play the original?" How do you Sure. It, 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 that's a great question. Um, um, I, I actually, I've been lucky in my tenure. So say over the past, say 10 years, I don't get that much any of that a- anymore sure. because people kind of know who I am and what I do, but I still get that. Mm-hmm. I, obviously, you know, cause I still do weddings and I still do corporate events and I still do not the crazy club stuff that in, in that environment, in that capacity, I pretty much get, you know, uh, a carte blanche to play what I think is cool and, and what yeah. works. But, but to your point, um, um, you know, I, I just kind of, you know, I, I found honest, honesty is the best policy. Yeah. <laughs> so if I get Jane Doe or John Smith that comes up and says, hey, I want to hear Michael Jackson. Um, and, and it kind of goes back to my point er- earlier. If I do choose to play a remix of a Michael Jackson song, I hopefully pick one that I'm not going to get that response. Right, that's you know close enough. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It, it it still fits in the in the programming that it kind of brings a a 2018 feel to a to say you know uh, uh, um, uh, 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 yeah yeah an, uh, an 80s track uh, Navy 80s exactly yeah. exactly mm-hmm. you know but to 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 specifically you know. Uh, answer your point. I just, I just kind of tell them, you know, if, if it's just one or two people that are like, Hey, just like you said, you know, Hey, that's great. You're playing this, but I kind of want to not hear that version. I want to hear the version that I know. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of been like, Hey, look, man, you know, it's, it's, it's a party. It's, it's, you know, it's working, especially if I just go, Hey, look at the dance floor. <laughs> and if there's still people out there, you know, getting it, but you're the only one that's kind of giving me grief about it. I'm like, you know, I'm not rude, <laughs> but, but I'm just like, hey, it's, you know, you, look, hey, look, there's the, there's the second verse. There's, there's nothing. It's still the same song. You know, actually, I, I've got a really good, uh, a, a really good remix to, uh, to uh, um, 
Whitney Houston, you yeah. know, I, I want to dance with somebody. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and generally because it, 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 it is a perfect example of what we've been talking about. It's a, it's a song from, you know, the late 80s, early 90s that everybody knows, yeah. every female knows. It's one of those crowd-pleasing songs. Very much so. But you're right, right. And it's a great song, but I've got a really cool dance remix to it that – is a bridge, if you will, from for, for, for me to be able to to play something that everybody knows, but yet it's in, in such a structure that it, it enables me to keep on in that vein. And I rarely get somebody going on that one. You know, I rarely get somebody going, hey, this is cool, but I want to hear the original, you know. But I mean, it does happen. It yeah. does happen. And I just I'm just kind of honest. I'm just like, hey, you know, it's a party and I've got this version, and trust me, all your friends are out there. So don't come hassle me. Go out and join them. Go on, that's a fun. You know, but, but, you know, and, and in high school, you, you probably get, I'll be honest, I don't do that many high school um, events anymore, mainly because of the music programming, you know, and I, if we want to touch on that, that's fine. You know, um, I, I do tend to play more, more dance, more up tempo. You know, uh, obviously a lot of stuff that's on the charts right now is more low tempo, more, you know, you know, uh, 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 um, yeah, 108 you know, like, to yeah. 110. Exactly, yeah, exactly. More, 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 more urban than I, I, I tend to to go to. Um, but even then, believe it or not, again, it's choosing. The, the, believe it or not, that they actually make, you know, l- let's say uh, like a uh, Migos or or a uh, or, or, or a Panda songs that I probably would never play mm-hmm. on my own. Believe it or not, if you look hard enough, there are actually some guys out there that make some really cool bootleg you know, dance mixes of those. And those are, are a great example of what you just asked. You mm-hmm. know, I'll play it up if I can squeeze it in. I'll play, and if it's clean, you know, I'll play an up-tempo mix of Amigos track. And in high school, probably half of them would be like, yo, that's cute and all, but that's not what yeah, <laughs> I yeah. want to hear the version I hear on the radio. Yeah, And I'm like, well, look, this is what I got. Mm-hmm. Hate to leave it. You know, so, you know, it, for me to answer the question succinctly, it's more, it's more of a, you know, I, I, honesty is the best policy, yep. which I, I kind of do the same thing with um, requests too. You know, I, I, I learned that lesson a long time ago. <laughs> Someone asked me for something. I'm not going to sit here and tell them, oh yeah, I'll get to, you know, and, and I know I don't have it or I know I'm not going to play it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and string them along for the next 45 minutes because then they they just become that fly. Yeah, they just up every six minutes. Like, you ain't played my song yet. You know, why are you playing my song? I asked you for 20 minutes ago. Yep. I just tell them straight up. You know, I either don't have it or it's not going to work in the format. You know, you're asking for song A. I don't have that, but I got song B from this artist. Is that okay? But I, I pretty much is for me is honesty is the best policy. I just tell them straight up. You know, it's, it's either not going to work. I don't have it you know, your plan A is not going to work. Let's go with a plan B and we'll go from there. You know? Yep. Um, so you've, you've mentioned a few different events you do with weddings, uh, you know, a little bit of dabbling in the school arena. And then of course the club area, give me an idea when it comes to, cause a lot of the, the, uh, viewers tonight and uh, watching us on replay are, are wedding DJs who are doing mainly that. How often are you using a remix compared to the original at a wedding? And then kind of then compare that to like when you're doing a club work and how much sure. your percent. Sure. Um, gr- uh, great question. That, that actually came up when I did my uh, seminar at the uh, DJ Expo in uh, um, 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 AC, uh, mm-hmm. you know, this, this past August. So, um, and they just, st- they just stick with weddings in like uh, a four week window. I did, you know, a, a wedding for say a uh, 30, you know, 30 ish age group, you know, very young demographic, if you will. And then I turned right around three weeks later and did a wedding for, uh, uh, a couple that was, uh, it was their second wedding for both of them. They were in their sixties, you know? So obviously I know my crowd, <laughs> I know who I'm playing to. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, obviously when I was playing and programming for the 30 year old crowd, um, I was able to get away with more of the remixes that we talked about at the top of the session. Um, and with the, with the 60 year old crowd, believe it or not, Obviously, I didn't do as much because they wanted more and they wanted a different type of music anyway. But yeah. remarkably, I, I do remember the uh, the uh, the uh, bride, um, she, you know, because, of course, she's a grandmother and she has younger kids in her life. She was very in tune with very popular current stuff. 
So she wanted May, uh, Megan Trainer. She wanted Ariana Grande. She wanted you know you know Katy Perry amongst all the other you would think stereotypical older things. Mm -hmm. And again, as long as I didn't deviate too much from the original song that I knew her kids would know or she would listen to in the car, they were okay with. You know, as, as long as I didn't beat him over the head with this crazy underground mix I just got, you know, two days ago that no one else has kind of thing. You know, um, uh, again, it, it, it gets down to, you know, knowing the crowd, knowing knowing the music and knowing how far you can you can push it. You know, so obviously with weddings, you know, you're you're really not there. E even though I don't want to make in, in a grand char characterization, I don't want to. Uh, put a divide, if you will, between club jock and wedding jock. But at the end of the day, when you are doing a wedding, you do have to be mindful that unless you're being hired to do that club feel for a wedding, which has happened, you know, your general weddings are pretty much run of the mill, you know, vanilla, if you will, just play straight lace, what everybody knows. And, you know, and it, that's where you can incorporate your X mixes and your Ultra mixes and, you know, and your little remix pools like that. They actually do have a decent twist. I actually use Ultra mix a lot, not to give them a plug. Or anything. Right. I actually, I actually use Ultra mix a lot. They are a great uh, uh, example of being able to pick, uh, you know, not only current songs, but, you know, uh, 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 songs that, that are going to be a hit. And the way they remix them and present them and give them to DJs, they actually fit in what I do very well. So nice. I, I can play an Ultimix remix at a 60 year old wedding and a 30 year old wedding. You know what I'm saying? So it just really, you know, um, um, depends on your crowd. But generally speaking, yeah, you know, you you don't come in to your average wedding thinking I'm going to be DJ Scribble. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just, you know, it, it just doesn't lend itself to that. You know, but you can have scribble moments. <laughs> moments. <laughs> you know, and that kind of leads me to the next question. As someone asked here, sure. David was mentioning, uh, wondering as far as do you play remixes back to back, or is there kind of a a methodology that I do a couple of remixes and then a a regular track, or how does it, how do you work that, or is there just a you do what feels right? I kind of do what feels right. I really play off the cuff. I've just it, it's a skill set that I learned a long time ago. Um, um, I'm, uh, you know, I know I'm in the minority in this aspect. Um, I'm not a big playlist guy, you know, um, and, and I, I get it that it works as a tool for a lot of DJs and I'm not putting it down. It's just not the way my brain works. Sure. So, um, um, and so doing that, I'm, I, I, it enables me to be very fluid and very spontaneous, but yet controlled. If that makes sense, okay. because um, I'm I'm very aware of what's going on in front of me. So um, to answer your question, it kind of depends on the set, you know. Um, and and take a wedding for example, you know. Uh, um, especially when you find yourself with certain songs that you play that kind of key and kind of work, and all of a sudden you're playing an eighty set, you know, and maybe you planned it or didn't plan it. You know, all of a sudden you're playing three or four songs. You know, I I kind of just kind of let the room kind of dictate where I go. And as far I really don't make a really conscientious effort of, ooh, I'm going to play three remixes back to back. It just kind of, you know, flows into, oh, I'm in an 80s set. So do I play the, uh, the, the, the uh, another one, uh, Duran Duran. Do I play the the regular Duran Duran mix that everybody knows that's been on the radio that they heard for the past thirty years, or do they? Or do I play the the really cool remix that will still work? But you know, and 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 what makes what determines that for me is where I go next. Mm -hmm. So if I know I've been playing eighties for say the past 20, 30 minutes, and it's time to flip flip it, I may go to the the new remix because that's going to lead me down another path. If I'm in the middle of that 80s set and I know I'm still going to play two or three more, I'll probably go with the original mix. So it just kind of depends at the moment what the floor is doing, where I'm going, where I want to go. So for, for me, there's no steadfast rule. It just kind of, you know, it just orga it, it organically, you know, kind of 
opens and, you know, kind of, you know, what happens next is what happens next. Sure. You mentioned key now, and you just dropped it one little blip in there. Are okay. you are you paying attention to the key of of the songs and mixing them that way, or is or is that not part sure? Of- um, honestly, I don't. Okay. Um, I I really don't. It, and for me, I, I still kind of go through that in a very uh, organic and a very um, analog way, if you will. Um, I don't. Um, obviously, with uh, the the software that any DJ use, I, I actually use um, Serato, but I, I know all the other DJ softwares as well. You know, give you that 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 uh, that uh, key, yep, you know, key. note. Um, um, so um, I really just go for more of a of a sound feel. Yep. You know, um, I've been very fortunate. It, 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 I, I I have found that technology as great as a tool as it is, has kind of made a little bit of my skills dumbed down, if you will. (laughs) So like, I'll I'll give you a, a, a it doesn't sound like like a really big thing, but I remember back in the day when I would play records, I could literally listen to a record for inside 20 seconds and I would be, I could tell you within one BPM what it was. You know, I I can't do that anymore. I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, for sure. the, the minute the song gets um, analyzed in your yeah, software, well, it tells you a BPM, yeah, exactly, is, and it's pretty spot on. Yeah, you know, so so I don't kind of rely on my brain to do that anymore. Ironically, when it comes to the keys and just and just the the tone of the record, I still rely on my brain to actually do that. So I don't have a problem just listening to it and knowing, I mean, and, you know, and every now and then I still get a clash, if you will, you know, but I'm pretty good yeah. at being able to just string tracks together that actually are, are harmonically okay. But honestly, I, I don't get that hung up on it. You know, I, I, to me, it's, it's, um, it's more of a, of a feel thing, you know, so I really don't get hung up on, on a key structures, you know, if, 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 if I was doing something super, super crazy, super, super important that, you know, you know, like, like, I guess, for example, if I'm playing to a bunch of DJs, <laughs> you know, I'm playing to a room that's, you know, 500 more DJs. Yep. Yeah, I probably, I probably would be a little more conscientious of, you know, key structure and stuff like that. But honestly, I'm just going to go with, with my gut because so far it's worked. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yep. And, and a few of the people who talk about in key mixing refer to sure. that, that most of the time we've been doing this for years without knowing it because exactly when it sounds right exactly. it sounds right so yeah that's it exactly i mean you you, you kind of you know like you said you, you play enough music that you kind of develop that skill set you know innately where and like i said i even catch myself i'm like you know i'm playing song a and I'm going to, oh, I think I'm going to bring in song B. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. You know, <laughs> I need to come up with something else, yep. you know, and then, you know, oh, that sounds better. Yeah, there you go. You're mixing in key and you, and you don't need a piece of software to tell you it ain't going to work. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Sometimes yeah. like flags jump up. Um, you mentioned earlier talking about uh, clean uh, clean tracks. Sure. You even you reference to that. Now, some of the remixes that I have been, I've looked at and such, some of them have had, they basically have taken the explicit version and they put a drum behind it, did their their things. How do you handle when you've got a mix, but it's like not clean enough for your use? Do you actually work with that or what do you do with those? Well, um, you know, th- th- there was a point in time when I was doing, you know, high school events and middle school events for college, they don't care. So it doesn't matter, but, and, and, and weddings and stuff. It, it seems like for the industry, if they have a particular track, they're going to give you a clean edit and a regular, you know, explicit edit. Okay. So it generally isn't that hard every now and again. I, what I used to do was if I knew I was playing a song and I couldn't find a clean edit. Yeah. I got sound on my computer. So I would actually go in there and take the word and twist it or put a little sound on top of it so it wouldn't be there. Um, I, I, I am conscientious enough that, again, depending on who I'm playing to, if I don't have a clean version of a song, I'm not going to play it because mm-hmm. I'm not going to take the risk of messing up. I, I know there's like little little things in Serato, and I'm pretty sure virtual DJ, that you know the little button that's the editing button as you play it, it'll 
yep. do a little backward Whatever. sound or something yep. and uh, eliminate the word or, or, or what have you. And I've done that, but to me, that's just too much work. <laughs> if I'm sitting here playing a three minute song and I know literally within every five seconds, there's going to be some, you know, NC 17 yeah. bomb dropped. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and then push that little key button on, on my GUI. You know, I'm, I'm either going to have a clean version and it's the same one that's on the radio and you're going to, you know, be happy with that. Or I don't have a clean version and we got to pick plan B, <laughs> you know? So yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, again, I, I'm, I find myself not doing events where I have to worry about that. You know, I mean, like, I, I, it's really funny. The past year or two, actually, I've been doing a lot of corporate uh, fundraising events. So it's pretty much, you know, white bread, a lot of money, you know, a lot of upscale stuff. So obviously, I'm not playing explicit versions there. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, and like I said, I, the, again, the, the remix services and promo only are really good about providing you with those versions. So, you know, I don't have too much of a concern of, you know, going out of my way to actually find a clean version. I, that's the version I'm pretty much going to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. um, I do do a couple of uh, college events like once or twice a month. Those are fun because they don't care. Yeah, so for sure. yeah. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So, you know, I can play as dirty as I want, if you will. But I, I you know, it's not something I really like gravitate towards. It's just whatever happens to be that mix or that project or that song. And, you know, if it's something super popular that I know I have to have a clean version, I'll go find it. I haven't had to edit a song myself to make it clean. And I don't even know how long mm. it's been a while, Nice, okay. you know, but I, I have done that. Yeah. I actually have done that. So, you know, it just, again, it's kind of like do, do it as, as needed mm -hmm. kind of thing. Let's let's drop a few more names. You've talked about a couple of sources so far. You've mentioned promo only. You've mentioned um, uh, Ultimix. What are some of your other kind of go places to go check out remixes? Well, that's a that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> and I'll tell I'll tell you on on several fronts. Um, on 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 what I can tell you <laughs> is. Um, in a in a former life, I actually was a was a Billboard reporting DJ. Okay. So so yeah, so I actually was on the panel, um, and at the time there were I think it was like 110 DJs, and they actually still st st um, still do it. But uh, um, so there were there were 110 DJs that were literally across the U.S. and we would make our and I, and I remember this how long ago it was. We used to fax our charts in. So we used to, I would literally, it was before computers. I literally would type my chart on a, on a piece of paper on a typewriter <laughs> and, and have white out in the whole nine. Yeah. And, and then when I would I, I get it done, I would fax it to New York and there would be 110 of us that would do Jesus. that. Oh my. And yeah, yeah. And because of that, you know, it gave me access to the industry and I got serviced. Oh my God, dude. I got service so much music, it it wasn't even funny. So because of that aspect of my life, I was able to maintain and cultivate industry contacts that to this day still reap me benefits. Oh, of sure. Being able, yeah, being able to get remixes of stuff that I know aren't out in the general public. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, having said that, I will tell you that the internet ha in other aspects, but with music, to this point has become a great equalizer because I do remember vividly back in the day when I was on, on billboard, you know, going to, um, win a music conference down in, um, Miami and there was just huge parties there. And it was so funny because some of my friends that we would go down there cause they knew that I was on billboard. We'd be at, you know, some crazy underground party and all these dope tracks would be playing and I'm sitting here making mental notes. And my friends would be like, dude, if you, do you know this? And are you going to get this? And I'm like, yeah, dude, it's probably sitting at home right now. And they would never get it. Yeah. They would never, they would never get those tracks. And you don't find that that much anymore yeah. now. You know, I mean, if, if even you hear some, you know, absurd mix set that DJ XYZ did in Ibiza two weeks ago, and you're like, dude, what track was that? Somebody somewhere, <laughs> if you Google hard enough, 
you know, yeah. you will find it. You will find it. And, uh, you know, the, so so on the side that I can tell you, um, again, you know, um, um, I, I get stuff service to me. Um, I do a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of digging online that there really isn't a specific site that I say, okay, like there's a clearinghouse that, you know, go to, you know, remix.com or something like that. I don't even know if that is a thing. I'm just saying, <laughs> you, know, you know, and, and, you know, a remix.net or something. I don't know, you know, probably the closest thing would be SoundCloud, but you know, honestly, I don't even spend that much time on, 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 on SoundCloud simply because it's, it, it's so volatile, you know, something that you either hear about, I find something you hear about, if you don't catch it at the right window, it's you either get it or it's gone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I, even though I do spend a lot of time downloading music, um, it, it, it really, I just use Google. Mm. I really do. You know, if I'm really searching for a particular version of some, whatever random track, you know, I, I just really do some hardcore, hardcore digging on the parts that I can't tell you. <laughs> it's just, you know, um, and, and to be candid, you know, there, mm -hmm. there are a couple sites that I, I do go to that are kind of, they're not illegal, you know, and, and I'm being super candid here. They're, 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 they're really FTP sites, okay. that, you know, that, that really come down to, you got to know somebody. It's like, it's, it's like the raves back in the day yeah. when like, you had to know somebody that would stand at the corner and be like, Oh no, this is the address. Here's the real address. Mm -hmm. So you finally get like the second clue and you finally get to this party, but you had to know somebody to do that. I kind of got a few things like that <laughs> and I really can't Go like divulge, divulge yeah. them because they're kind of, you know, you, you got to know somebody, you yeah. got to be hooked up. So, you know, I, 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 but, but, but honestly, there isn't that much of that. There, mm -hmm. There's enough that there's there's nuggets out there that I actually do have access to. But honestly, people just got to dig. Yeah, it's I mean, it, it, it really it's it's it, you know I've I've written articles about mm -hmm. it. You know, I've done posts about it. it. It is that is one of the lost arts, if you will, of being a DJ because it's you know with the internet being what it is and everybody getting email and everybody subscribing to the same remix services you know whether they're you know you know club bangers club killers bar bangers you know whatever yeah, you know there's man. a million you know uh, uh um um the one that uh uh funk max reflects the uh, franchise you know there's a ton of remix pools out there legit unlegit whatever but at the end of the day a, a lot you know it we can all subscribe and we can we potentially have access to all the same stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm all saying? Really, they're, 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 they're re honestly, you know, I, I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but I, honestly, when it gets right down to it, there really isn't that much. Di what, what I'm getting isn't anything different than anybody else can get. Yeah, It's just, I just dig deeper just dig, and yeah. more often. <laughs> uh, Tony, we're running out of time here. We got one last question. Uh, somebody was asking about if you, if you find a remix that you really like, but there's, you have you spent some time not to clean it, but to maybe like, you're like, oh, it just needs a little bit more this right here. Have you spent time doing that? Or is that not part of your, your process? Absolutely. I, I sure have. I mean, I, I actually have a, a studio that I do a, a production on and, mm. and a lot of stuff I do on my laptop. But I mean, yeah, absolutely. I've got no shame in that. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I try not to because, you know, just, just time, you know, because I got other things that I have to do. But I have no problem getting, you know, a, 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 a remix that's like, you know, say it's only, you know, a, a, the best example, something that's like only two, three minutes long, which is kind of short, you know, oh yeah, I got no problem dumping in, dumping it into SoundForge and, and not remixing the remix, but just making it more DJ friendly for me. Sure. If I like a certain section that I want to extend that out and I know I'm going to play with it and mix with it. Absolutely. I'll turn a three minute track into a five minute track hmm. all the time. Nice. Yep. I got no problem doing that. Very nice. Yep. Tony, our time has absolutely flown by here tonight. Holy cow. That's cats. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got, we, and we just they were talking music and such. We didn't even get into beyond that. So we'll have to plan another night to have you come back. Absolutely. This was, fun. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. 
Uh, gang, we're going to uh, wrap up here because we've got to get to our next show here uh, starting at 9 o'clock Eastern, so at about 20 minutes. We've got, got uh, Jamie Bodie coming on, and we got to get a few things set up because his shows, uh, we're doing a few more in, in-depth in things tonight with that. So, Tony, no thank problem. you much for your time, and I look forward to our next time together. Absolutely, John. It was a pleasure. You we'll take be, care, man. Yep, thank you. We'll be back in just a few right. minutes, everybody. 